I'm glad we're finally back here. I'm glad I'm finally able to do this. And um, I had some issues with my website, by the way. So um, I had to fix that before I could get back to shooting videos because um, the uh, path I laid down for this is I write the reviews first. I write them down first, publish them before I then do a video on them. So I had to do the website part before we got back to this. But, but it's Saturday right now. There's a lot of noise outside, I think you can hear. Uh, the sun is out, it's cool, it's quiet and so I decided let's do this right live from Lagos. Um, just to quickly um, plug in at this point right, um, the book review is already up on my website chickajones.com you'll see the link below and um, it's Teju Cole Sits in the Dark, that's the title I gave it and some of the examples I'll be giving here, some of the things I'll be talking about here are already penned down in that published um, in that published review i'm adding a bit more obviously um because um unlike other book reviews i i, I do yeah i kind of partition it into about five um five great five um, criterias for judging per se um this time i'm just going to go off the cuff right i'm just going to be talking about it i have my main ideas penned down so i'm not just rambling uh, but I'm just going to be going off the cuff here and hopefully you get the gist of what I'm trying to pass ac across, right? So yeah, today's book review is about, it's about something slightly different from how I usually do it, right? So usually I just take one particular book and review it, but because of the kind of writer I, I, I read uh, before this review, I decided to go another route, which is I read all these books, the ones that have been published, and most of his essays, um, at least the ones published, I read those ones, but there are quite a number online I also read. I listened to a lot of his podcasts, a lot of his interviews, just to get a sense. And this, this is why that was important, because um, if you're reading um, someone like Teju Cole, or because I was reading someone like Teju Cole, I found that if I do not understand really what he's trying to do, if I do not understand the concept his books are built around, it will be difficult for me to enjoy it because um, I've seen quite a number of people say they are boring, his books are boring or pretentious and I feel it's because they don't understand what he's trying to do and this is why that is important I, it's fine, I totally agree that if you feel like the book you're reading is boring it's not worth the stress you can dump it and move on with your life right? because life is too short right? but if you decide to take it a step further right, to um, dig a bit deeper you might actually enjoy that book. Let me give an example, right? Let me give an example. I liken this to art in my head, right? I was at Relay Gallery, I think, some time ago, and I, I couldn't understand. So I'm looking at this paintings, right? This portraits, this the art on the wall, and I couldn't understand what they meant, right? The, what do the splashes mean? Do people really enjoy this? Are they pretending? And usually, the, there's general misconception, right? That people are just pretending, right? Um, so what, what are they looking at? There's nothing there. They're just pretending to enjoy it so that they are seen as cool, etc. But I have friends who actually really enjoy art, right? And I know that these guys are not pretending, right? They're not trying to be cool. They really enjoy this. And, and I spoke to one of them, and he was like, what you have to do is look at it. Right, really consider it. So it's not, it's not art is not like see a picture. Um, it's not like a photograph, right? Uh, and when I say photograph, I'm talking about the mainstream photography or what, what, what we call, consider commercial photography: a husband and a wife, right? You look at the, a picture of a husband and a wife, available mainstream, and you get it. It's the husband and the wife getting married, right? That, that's it. Uh, but art takes it a step further, and there, there is photography, there is art, right? Um, which is what Tejuko also does in a way, right? So when, when you look at such art, you take it a step further. You stand in front of it for several minutes, looking and looking and looking until some, a pattern emerges, something hits you, right? And the, in the best art, right, what hits you, what comes to you is not usually what comes to other people. And that's what make, makes art so beautiful. So w when, when you're reading a book, right, while I understand that it is your prerogative to say, man, I'm not interested in this, right? Let me go to another book that's more enjoyable. If you take the time, right, to understand, develop that skill to read that particular book, sometimes you might be rewarded with um, a deeper enjoyment of it. Now, this is not to say that every single book might be worth your time. You decide what you decide to delve deeper in, right? 
but um if you happen to do it and you happen to find the hidden gems right you will enjoy it. it's like um it's like people that enjoy marvel movies right the marvel cinematic universe uh, has been created if you watch a single movie right or a single episode right of a marvel of the, or something from marvel um it's easy to see wh why are people so hype about this right what are the easter eggs they're seeing here there's nothing here but if you have uh, the context right of the Mar entire marvel cinematic universe you are likely to then enjoy it more right every single frame every scene carries a deeper meaning for you in a way I and that is what i did with tejuko right um, instead of just looking at that one book and saying nah i'm not doing this i decided to try and understand what he does right and so today's book review is more like an author review um i read um four of his books this four right as um known as strange things which is a collection of his essay and under that is open city um and then you have every day is for the thief and then you have the latest which is blind spot and um in reading those four i was able to understand the kind of author he is right and the kind of things he is interested in now what i discovered about him is once Teju cole is latches onto an idea and that idea is usually a word sometimes right but once he latches onto that idea that concept is very obsessive about it right and so sometimes that obsession comes out in the kind of works he creates from it the photographs he takes the books he writes the essays he writes and the interviews he gives right and if you do not understand what the idea is right if you don't understand what the concept is well enough you might find it difficult to enjoy what he has created the art he has created out of it right? that's the first thing i discovered and I'll, I'll give you an example of this right um in 1960 right um there's a, there's a swiss photographer called ren Bury. i'm not sure i'm pronouncing that right could be rene Bury. i'm not sure but it's r-e-n-e -E. i'll type the name out on the screen right and this photographer this swiss photographer shot um, a photograph that was called men on a rooftop right men on a rooftop and Men on a rooftop caught Tejuko's eye. And so he started trying to understand, first of all, where the photograph was shot from, right? Because the angle looked so, I guess, interesting to him. He traveled, so he found out obviously the photograph was shot in Sao Paulo. So he traveled all the way to Sao Paulo, right? And started looking for the exact spot the photograph was shot. And this was no, this was, this, this was no easy trip, right? Traveling all the way to Sao Paulo, it would go into a high-rise buildings because he could tell it was shot from somewhere high up. He would go into a high-rise building, knock on the door and say, please, can I take a picture? And they would let him in. And this is what he did for about five days, right? Up and down the streets and still could not find it, right? He reached out to publishers, reached out to photography historians, per se, reached out to people who were knowledgeable about the subject, but nobody could find it. But eventually he did. Um, I think a day to the end of his trip in Sao Paulo, he happened upon a place he climbed and just realized that the issue was the lens he had been trying with was different right um, but finally he was able to recreate right find where that photograph was taken from and, and that's that that gives you an idea of how he how deep he delves into a subject or things he's very interested in and so when you read his book sometimes right or when i read when i read his book i found out that what happens is he's so deep into the subject right it's easy to lose readers who are not who are not ready to do the work right who are not ready to do the work and like i said right disclaimer if you do not want to do the work it's fine it's very fine life is too short right do you pick the books you want but i think right that if you're ready to do the work as a reader sometimes you are rewarded with awesomeness right you're rewarded with awesomeness so yeah that's an example of um Tejuko being very obsessed about a particular subject right and then the review of his books these four books he just showed you the review showed that he is also interested in the concept of the blind spot the concept of the blind spot now the blind spot is is a word the blind spot is a word that can be defined in various ways it doesn't just have one definition so I'm just going to quickly um, tell you the definition of the blind spot, and then we're going to go into how we know Tejuko is obsessed with this, right? 
So um, the blind spots, um, there are three different ways to explain the blind spot. One, um, it is a spot, right, where your optic nerve, so I'm talking about anatomically, it is an anatomic definition of the blind spot. It is a spot where the retina meets the optic nerve and there are no light sensitive cells there, so you can't see anything there. So, so um, what I'm saying in essence is, every human being has this, is not um, what I would consider abnormal. Right? It is normal for every human being to have a blind spot. What should ideally happen, because we all have blind spots in our eyes is this, right? When you're looking at something, like even looking at this video right now, in that spot, there should be a hole, like a dark hole, something that you are not seeing something dark there should be a spot there that is dark the blind spot but you notice that you don't see that we all do not see that so why, why are we then able to see everything as if there is no blind spot one of the common explanations is this the brain fills that blind spot with something now this is interesting because what it means is what your brain fills it with is different from what my brain fills it with and by extension, what this means is what we are seeing is subjective. Right now, in this moment, what you're seeing is subjective. It depends on who you are. You are not really seeing what you think you're seeing. And that is the anatomical definition of a blind spot. Now, a blind spot is also a gap in your knowledge. The things you don't know, the things you don't see. When you're driving, there's a blind spot, right? Somewhere where the side mirror does not really see what it's supposed to see at the back, right? We all have blind spots in different areas of life. And Teju Cole is obsessed with the blind spot. He, he delves into the blind spot. And this, this is especially personal for him because he, re, he also, at some time in his life, had an issue with his eyesight, right? And um, had to have his sight treated, right? So it's also on a personal level something that he connects with. So I'm going to take you through some examples of how the idea, the concept of the blind spot comes through in all Teju, Teju Cole's books so far. In the collection of essays and in the book Blind Spots, what you see is photographs. So Teju Cole is a photographer, right? He takes quite a lot of photographs. Um, there, in an interview, he said he has about 7,000 photographs that he has taken, right? That he has in his archive, right? So the question is why? It is because of the blind spots. He realizes that what your eye is seeing is not actually accurate. It is very subjective, right? If you're looking at something, you're bringing your preconceived notions to it. And so the best way to actually see is through a camera, a man-made contraption that is not subjective in any way. So he buys cameras and starts taking photographs, right? Obviously, his essays come out from there, compositions come out from there, but that is one way we see that Teju Cole is, uh, is very interested in the blind spot. Right? In Open City, the protagonist, whose name is Julius, half German, half uh, Nigerian, is a psychiatrist, right? Um, he's a psychiatric doctor. The learn. He's a psychiatric doctor. And this is especially interesting because that is a blind spot in medicine, right? What we do not know about how the brain works, a lot of what we know is very subjective. So the question um, Teju Cole tries to grapple with in that book is, what do we not know that we do not know about the human mind? right what depths have we not got into when it comes to the human mind and that is why and those are some of the questions the protagonist julius grapples with in open city another thing is the concept of the city itself what is a city what makes a city a city the people living in the city why are they there what goes on in a city the the i, I would assume right if you're watching this video you go to work every day, right? Or you go to school, or you go about your daily life every day in a city, right? The roads you pass, underneath them, what is buried there, right? And ex an example he uses is Selma, right, in Alabama, right? Um, in the essay, in his essay, Alabama, which is in his collection known as Strange Things, he takes us through the city of Selma and talks us through how that racist past affects the daily lives of people living in Selma, affects the ground upon which they try to uh, go about their daily activities each day. And so um, when you walk through a city, the monuments you see, the plaques you see, the houses, 
how did they come about what's in there what are you not noticing so so i guess the question is what are you not noticing right and that is what as um Tenju coach protagonist julius walks through the cities in the book open city he notices things that we will not really notice and, and something interesting is this right um, open city was set five years after 9-11 in 2016 right so uh how has the city changed what has happened what do people not no notice right those are the things so think of it as uh, and this is uh, an analogy teju cole himself used in an interview think of it instead of thinking of it as a book in the traditional sense of a book think of it as a an exhibition an art exhibition right when you're going to an art exhibition um, rarely do you see like a, a straight line story. So beginning, no, you know what you see is a mood, a vibe, a concept, right? And that shows up in the vase that is placed there, in the decorations you see, in the actual art themselves, right? Everything is everything. Everything connects in a way. It tells a story, but not in the way you think of it as a story. It tells, it gives a feeling of, right? And what's interesting is the feeling you sometimes come off with is not the same with everybody else. And that's what make, makes art right, really interesting, right? Everybody takes something different from it, from the way it's set up. And that is how Teju Cole's books are, right? You, what you see in Open City is not a story in the normal sense of it what you see is a collection of experiences that points to one thing the blind spot right and now moving away from open city we go into every day is for the thief and in every day is for the thief it goes to lagos right looking at the blind spots blind spots in the infrastructure blind spots in the people it may meet us every day the things you do not actually notice are the things it brings it brings up i would say right that every day is every day for the thief right um is not as strong as open city in this in the, in the concept wise right um I, I i dare say that it, it was still trying to tackle the concept there it got better in open city it got better in the collection of essay and it's perfected in the actual book blind spot but you can see the progression as you read the books along so one thing i would advise is don't read them as separate books think of them as one long book talking about the blind spot from every day is for the fifth down to blind spot itself and in the penultimate page that's second to the last page of every day is for the thief teju Cole's main character is in the streets in lagos where they make coffins right so you see a longer street where everybody there is usually making coffins right for people to be buried in and then he, he, he spotlights one particular coffin maker is a tall man is wearing a sky blue cap and he's carving out a coffin so you know how he's cleaning the coffin the shavings are falling at his feet he captures that really well but then he also points to the fact that one eye of the guy is closed now maybe this may be a defect that the guy has one eye bad or just that the guy consciously closes the eye so that the shavings do, do not get in but Teddy Cole talks about it as the fact that the guy's eyes are closed to the distractions of the world while they are focused on a very important task and what is that task creating a befitting passage for people who die into the other world so um, he talks about a modern day Karen, and Karen in this in this case is a, a, a great character who secures passage for the living to, uh, from the land of the living to the land of the dead. Right. So think. So it, it, it brings it brings to life the importance of having a blind spot, because when you have a blind spot, when one eye is closed, you are better able to focus on what is important. Right. And and I found that I found I found that idea very interesting. And then um, when you move to the collection of essays, known and strange things, right? You see different, so the collection of essays, which, which is this, right? Is, is broken into um, reading things, seeing things, uh, being there an epilogue. So reading things speaks about him reviewing books he has read, right? Poems he has read, um, articles he has read. Seeing things, things in movies he has seen, right? And being there is about travel right and then epilogue obviously and as, as usual you notice the epilogue ends with the essay called the blind spot so once again we are back to the blind spot at this point 
One of the essays I found very interesting, right, in the collection of essays known as Strange Things, is called A Picture of Black Skin. And there, he extends the concept of a blind spot to say when something is in a blind spot, right, when something is in the dark, you do not always have to shine a light on it. You can understand it. You can dig deep to understand it. You can analyze it, right, to understand what it is. But after that, you can leave it. Not everything has to be brought to the light and examined. And, and he said, he, he speaks of this with the, with the understanding that black people are usually expected to perform, right? We're usually expected to tap dance, right? To create um, entertainment, to, 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 to be analyzed, right? Our customs, our way of life, everything is brought to the light and examined under the harsh light of whiteness, right? And then Teju Cole, in borrowing a phrase from Tony Morrison, says, it is okay to play in the dark. It is okay to stay in the shadows, right? As long as you understand it, which is fine, understand it, but live it. And this is not to sound profound or anything or to be mysterious. It is simply respectful. It is simply kind. Um, to to and and also uh, and this also brings to mind discernment to know what what should be brought to light, what should be left at as is, right? That, that that is a very good uh, that is a very interesting concept. It brings up in the essay a true picture of black skin. So the second essay which I found very interesting is when he was reviewing the film Amor, right? And the, and he reviewed the film Amor. Um, Amor is a 2012 film about growing old. And it's it's really jarring, but but it, it speaks to a, a very interesting concept, right? Which is linked to the blind spot, and that concept is this, right? When telling a story, it is important that you strip it of agenda and propaganda. And this is the quote. I, this is a quote I really like from that essay. It says, "It is more a matter of willingness to push past the cliches of representation." into a zone of discomfort so specific it achieved universality the ability to be at once universal and yet ineluctably particular now now, now what that what that explains is this right sometimes in creating art in writing there is a fear that you might alienate the audience they might not get it right this thing i'm so interested I'm interested in they might not get it and we see that come true when people read Teddy Cole's books right they might not get it it's boring it's um pretentious let's move on from it right it's possible that they don't get it but you have to move pa move past that fear focus on what you want to focus on and and create art about it why because when you do that very well right and the film Amor does this so well Teddy Cole's books does it so well. when you do it so well you 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 are in a zone of specificity a zone so specific it achieves universality it becomes something everyone can understand it's a, it's quite an interesting um, concept it's um it's a concept he has always discussed right and talking about photography Teddy Cole says or was it Emmanuel Duma now I'm not sure but when you the photographs that make us pause the photographs that you look at and you, you don't just say and so and move on the photographs you look at and you are like okay what's here are those photographs that allow you space to enter they are photographs in which you can see your subconscious can see itself you can see yourself in those photographs in a way and that is why those photographs matter to you and those are the kind of photographs that you also likes to make right and that is the kind of art I feel we should all strive to make. The kind of art that is comfortable playing in the dark. The kind of art that is so specific it achieves universality. The kind of art that is focused on what it is focused on without propaganda, without agenda, without caring to panda. That is the kind of art I hope we all create. And that, that is my main takeaway from reading Teddy Cole's books and, and, and listening to how he makes and creates art. I'd like to end on this note. In creating art, may we always find the strength to sit comfortably in the dark. Thank you very much. And um, obviously, I'll catch you guys um, in the next review. 
Do not forget to subscribe, share this with your friends. I would like to know what you think in the comments about the book review. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying a new style. So let me know what you think also about the style generally and anything, anything actually you, you feel like you want to comment on. Um, yeah, that's it, I guess. That's it. That's it. It's done. It's over. <laughs>